back to my YouTube channel, Wildwood Cottage Diary. Um, today I've got to do the chimney. I've got to sweep the flue because uh, it's kicking back black smoke and it's not drawing properly. So it makes me think that the chimney needs a bit of a sweep. Um, we do have an awkward bit on the wall um, because the chimney is away from where the fire is. For some reason they didn't build the fireplace where the chimney breast is. So it's got to travel through the wall to get to the flue. But um, yeah, I've started taking it apart. I've got an arrow stove. It's a four and a half kilowatt stove. So it's ideal for this room, but um, it's just very black at the moment. We did have a problem with the chimney um, and it was damp and it was leaking. And there's four pots up the top and only one of them was covered. So every time we had a rainstorm, the water was just flowing down the chimney. And um, the flue liner was taken out no, the flue liner was disconnected in the other room when we had the Rayburn taken out. And, um, yeah, we've had to have the flue liner replaced so we can have the log burner fitted in the other room. Because it was an oil Rayburn and you can't use an oiled um, flue liner with um, a log burner. You're not allowed to. And plus it was um, only a single skin liner and you have to have a double. So that's, what, uh, that's the story behind it. But the thing is, when the uh, flue was wet and the chimney was wet, um, the flue wasn't, uh, even though it was seasoned wood that was going into the fire, it was still making it thick, the fire think it was damp and it was producing a lot of black smoke. So yeah, the glass does have black on it. But I'm hoping now that the other fire is connected in the other room and we've got two flue liners and we've had the two middle pots capped now so they've got like little umbrellas on the top to stop the rain coming in and uh, I'm hoping now that with this fire will work more efficiently so that's another reason why I want to sweep it so that we can tell the difference now between um, when we swept it in March or February it had two sweeps last season I swept it when um, we first lit the fire and it was swept in March um, so I'm hoping that sweeping it again now with that log burner fitted, that will be able to tell the difference now the chimney's drying out. So we've got all se mostly seasoned wood in the garage and in the uh, woodshed. I do check it before I put it in, but sometimes I get caught out and there's a bit of moisture in the middle of it and I haven't realised. So I don't think these moisture meters are very accurate, so that's my thinking. But I do try to use one, I have got one, I'll just show you what I've got. I've got one of these, it's a digital moisture meter and um, it's got four calibrated wood groups for, celebrate, for cele celebrating, for selecting measurement principle. So you can select an option on, I'm just taking it out the box for you. You can select an option on the meter and um, then you can test your wood. So I'll just show you the meter. I think it was only about £6. It's this thing here. So you switch it on. And you see the screen there? And then there's an option where you can choose the mode button. Where are we? The mode button here. Written on the front is all the different types of wood that you can check for and woods that would be within that group. You have to be a bit of a know-it-all when it comes to wood to know what to do, but it does um, teak, aphromosia, walnut, white poplar, uh, laurel, ash, elm, basswood, larch and pine. So it doesn't have oak on there, doesn't have elm on there. Oh yes, it does have elm, but it doesn't have oak, it doesn't have sycamore. Um, so I guess you've just got to guess that. You take the lid off the top and it's got these two pins. And these two pins are what you stick in your wood. And then it'll read it on the screen roughly as to how much moisture there is in it. And you want between 13 and 20% according to the leaflet. So that's what I've been trying to aim for. But as I say, because it hasn't got all of the um, woods that I can get here, because I get sycamore and I get oak, um, what else do I get that's not on there? I get ash. I get a lot of ash here. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few things on there that we don't get. There's beach as well. I don't think beach is on there. No, beach isn't on there. And we can get quite a lot of beech wood around here. So, so yeah, that's the meter. 
Behind me is the fire. I've got my plastic on it already. I just need to cut my hole in it. I put some newspaper inside the grate to try and catch the soot as it comes down so it's not as hard for cleaning up. And uh, I've got my brushes. I'll just turn you around and show you my brushes. These are my brushes that I've got. I bought them on eBay and they were about £30 but you only get seven rods. And if I'm going to replace the rods, it's, I have to buy another pack. So, yeah, they're gonna, it's going to have to wait for the minute. But we had it uh, swept professionally in March. So I, I'm just hoping to be able to do the little ledge that's in the flue. Because I'll just show you. The flue comes out the chimney there, out the fire. It goes up, but then it goes across to the corner there. And then just there where that lamp is, is where the chimney breast is. And the flue pipe is the first one, so it's roughly in the corner. So it's going to come from there, all the way down, and then into the fire. So that's the bit I want to concentrate on, really, on sweeping today, is that angle. Because the soot comes straight down the pipe, and then it will just settle on that ledge. So, yeah, that's, that's the bit that's the problem. So if it gets too much soot in it, or too much clinker or whatever, it uh, just gets blocked. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to go and get the drill. So I'll be back in a sec. Right, on the end of the rod is one of these pins. Now there's a little button here. And you press that button in. And you just take that pit, that thing out. Right, so this is the little pin. And that's the bit that goes in the... This bit goes in the end of the rod. And this bit goes in the drill. So we're just going to put that on the one with the brush. The rod has a little hole just there. That's where you want to line your pin up. That's what you want to line your pin up with. So you push the button in. Push the little button in. Push it down. That clips in place. Right, so I'm just putting the plastic over the, the entrance. I put newspaper inside on the grate at the bottom. So we're just going to put this plastic on. I'm using the, there's quite a big sheet, so I'm just using the end to tuck that in under there. And then I'm going to cut a hole in the middle. So that the brush will go through and the pole. Like that. So we'll do that. Big enough. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got it up the flue pipe first off. Now I can already see there's lots in there. Yeah, there's a lot, an awful lot in there. So, attach it to the drill. And then we spin. Right, so when you get to the uh, to your, your pipe and you need to get the thing off. There we are. You put your next one in. <coughs> Just clips in. Give it a push. back in and put it back on your drill and give it a spin
need some more tape in that opening. I'm surprised how much is coming down to be honest, definitely to do with that liner being wet. Right, let's do the next one. I remember last time I had all seven on, so... Put another one on, this is number three. Always make sure it's on tight. You don't want your pipe getting stuck. That's why I always check it'll come back out. You don't want your brush getting stuck up the flue. Amazing how much soots up that chimney. Right, you need to start taking your pipes off now. And any soot that it's loosened, it should bring down with it when it comes down. There wasn't that much. There was enough to cause a problem. But I think that was at the first bit of the pipe so this doesn't seem to be pulling that much down here's the, oh here's the brush so I'm just going to pop it back in again to make sure Right, let's pull the front. Leave that to settle for a minute. Right, so this is what we've got out. It's not as full as it was. The last time, when I did it the first time, it was right up here. So that's not actually too bad. There's a little bit here on the sheet. So we're just going to, I'm glad I put the newspaper in. We're just going to lift the paper out. I've taken my mask off. That can talk to you. But I'm pleased to put that paper in. It saved a lot of trouble. I've got my dust pan in there. So that's what we've got out. It's a five litre tub of paint, paint tub, and it's roughly half full. So yeah, that was quite a bit to get out after three months, and it's still quite sooty in there, so I'm going to have to give it a really good clean. So I'm going to get the hoover on it, the old hoover, and uh, give it a clean out. So
Right, now it's time to put it back together. So we've got our top plate, the dust off. There's a lot of dust. Right, this way up, like that. This is the top, that's the fire side. What can remember? I think, or is it that way? No, it's that way. That way is the fire side, that way is the top. So, the first thing we have to do is put the smaller bricks at the back. So we put these two at the back. And we have to try and get our plate back in. And then this one goes in the other side. Lift the plate up. Get them in. You have to move your bricks about a bit, faff about with them. Oh shoot, so that one nearly broke. This one gets pulled out a bit. That one goes in. Oh, have I got them on the wrong way round again? in business. Back ready for the fire. So I'm going to go and get me dinner and then when I come back I'm going to do the fire. I'm going to go to the shop first and then I'll come and do the fire and I'll show you what it's like when we've lit it. So there we go it's all nice and clean. You can't really see it can you because of the light. It's all nice and clean in there now, so we're all ready to go. It's a dark, wet, damp day again in Wales today. And uh, it's that kind of miserly rain that just flies around all over the place. So I've decided to put the fire on. Um, it's only about half ten, but I've decided to put the fire on, get cosy, and uh, do some knitting and some craft today, or some weaving, and sit in front of the fire. So, yeah, enjoy your day wherever you are. <laughs> 